Hi guys, my name is Franck, and in this Armor 3 video, I'm going to show you guys how to set up a server.cfg file for your Armor 3 dedicated server. If you don't know what a server.cfg file is, then I have the link to the wiki page about it in the description of this video. Just check it out. There's a bunch of server options and commands and so on for the server.cfg, as well as information what it is and so on, and, and, and additional details, but we're not going to go over everything with the server.cfg. I'm just going to show you basically an example of how you can set it up. So I'm going to minimize this and here I already have my dedicated server open. I'm using the program WinSCP which is a free program and that's why I use it for opening my dedicated server's files and editing them. And so here we are. This is my dedicated server's AMA3 directory. In other words, this is where AMA3 is installed on the dedicated server. And here I have some mods already uploaded to the server, as well as, you know, some missions uploaded, and a server.cfg file. If you don't have the server.cfg file, then that's going to be a big problem for you, and I recommend that you immediately try to add it to your server, uh, your dedicated server. Make sure your dedicated server is off, by the way, when you start doing all this. So, once the server.cfg is already added to your dedicated server, and if you don't have one, like I said, you could download it from my, the description of my video. I'll have a link to an example or a template. And we're going to right-click it. And once you have it already uploaded, just right-click it, edit it. And here's the server.cfg I use for my dedicated server. And it'll be a pretty decent template for you guys. Not everything, like I said, is used in the, dedicated, uh, the server.cfg for my server, but I don't really need to, so I'm just using what I need. So to start off, um, whatever has two forward slashes is a comment or a description. They, whatever comes afterwards is serves no functionality in that line. So whatever's on this line with the two forward slashes afterwards is has no functionality. It's just a description or a comment, and you do not need to require or you do not need to include them in your server.cfg. They're just there for you know, helping explain stuff or whatever. Anyway, we're going to start with the actual first functional command here in this server.cfg, and that's hostname equals, and then inside these quotation marks, there is a name here. And this name is what will show up in the server browser for ARMA3. So when players are searching the server browser in ARMA3, they will see my server come up with a star, space, at CAG, space, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's the name of the server that it will appear. And then here is the password. If you want a player to enter a password, you would have them enter a password here. But if you don't want a password, and you, you don't want players to be required of to enter a password to enter the server, then you just leave this area in between the quotation marks blank. Afterwards is the password admin. I recommend you do set a pass password for this. And as an example, I have open sesame as the password. And if you want wanted to log in as an admin, then you simply, when you're in the game, type in like vehicle chat, hashtag login space open sesame, and that will, and then press enter and it'll tell you that you logged in. And that this, I think this will only work if you have BattleEye enabled on your server. Maybe I'll do a video about that in the future, but it's not necessary right now. Then we have the welcome message or the message of the day, the MOTD, basically Every line that has two quotation marks and a comma is its own line, its own message. And down here, we have an MOTD interval. So basically what this means is this value represents the delay in between each message. So after this message, three seconds later, it will play this me message. And then in another three seconds, it'll play this one, and so on. So basically after nine seconds of empty messages, which is just to create a delay in after the jumbled information when the player joins, such as, you know, when the when a player joins, there's a lot of information that gets displayed, such as player has joined, player has modified data, battle eye version is this, CBA version is not matching, blah blah blah, stuff like that. So this just allows some time to pass for those ma messages to fade away, and then it'll act, we have our actual messages that we want the player to see afterwards. So we have, after nine seconds, it'll have this message. So inside the quotation marks, we have star 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 space Vaughn is disabled which you know I'm just saying that the Vaughn is disabled because as you see down here disable Vaughn equals one which means that the Vaughn is disabled and then it tells the player to join TeamSpeak afterwards and then afterwards it says the TeamSpeak information or the the link to the TeamSpeak 
and this is the like I said this is the delay in seconds between each message hopefully I explained that well enough this right here I'm not positive exactly what this is but I'm pretty sure that this checks the files some a couple of the files in Arma 3's uh, folder of the client so for example when a player joins it makes sure that these two files the data 3d.pbo file was not modified in any way on that client's side and if it was then they will not be able to join the server it basically prevents hackers and scripters slightly so it's one of the countermeasures to hackers basically then we have max players this is pretty simple I don't think I really need to explain it but basically whatever this value is this is the maximum amount of players that will be allowed to join the server so even if you have a mission that has 20 slots if max players is set to 16 then 20 players cannot join only 16 I own a dedicated server that only has 16 slots so there's no re need to include more pl uh, max player slots I'm not allowed to so next is kick duplicate this basically just is mainly useful for when when a player with a low ping joins your server and he keeps connecting disconnecting connecting disconnecting it tends to leave duplicate accounts of that guy's disconnected accounts if that makes sense so you'll ha let's say a guy named Bob joins if he, he gets dis disconnected and comes back then he'll come back as Bob and then he'll have Bob one as his previous account or his new account and then it'll just stack up Bob one Bob two Bob three and you will have all these fake players that will be taking up bandwidth and shit in your server anyway this basically prevents that it gets rid of the duplicates and only keeps the uh, non duplicate account the guy who's actually alive and not disconnected hope that makes sense then there's verify signatures this makes sure that the buy keys of the add-ons on the server are being checked and they are valid so if a, if a client joins the server and one of the buy keys was missing or modified they will not be able to join and these buy keys right here by the way when it when it verifies signatures it'll be checking these keys right here if I'm not mistaken and the those keys will be respective to whatever add-on they're with if that makes sense and of course this equal mod required is pretty much pairs up with it very well with uh, verify signatures equal mod required basically means that all the players on the server need to have all the same mods period there are no side you know optional client side mods or anything like that everyone has to have the exact same mods everything every mod that's required on the server is required period nothing else aside from that so if you set it to zero that means it's disabled. Same thing for verify signatures. And for kick duplicate equals one. If you set it to zero, that means false. So it means it'll be off, by the way. I'm not going to go over voting because I think voting is stupid. And, well, in my case, it's stupid. I only have one mission on the server. So, so for example, right here, then we have Altus, Altus Insurgency, RHS underscore one underscore two three dot Altus. And so basically, this is the map and this is the actual mission name you could find the mission name down here so if you wanted to change your mission to stratus Insurg insurgency for example you'd find that right here so strat insurgency underscore one underscore two dot stratus if it's uploaded in the mp missions folder of the dedicated server anyway and of course this is this is the difficulty but I guess I skipped ahead of all these, so whatever. Let's just get get this uh, shit show on the road. First, we have disable Vaughn. This will disable Voice Over Net, which is the in-game chat system. I think it's kind of shitty. We use Task Force Radio on my server, so disabling Vaughn is, you know, very encouraged. So setting it to one will disable Vaughn. Setting it to zero will not disable it. Vaughn codec quality can range from zero through 10 I think so 0 means shitty quality 10 means good quality think of it that way you could also set it to 5 or whatever then we have battle eye equals 1 that means it's enabled if you set it to 0 battle eye is disabled although I don't know why you would disable it if you although there are benefits to this to disabling battle eye because if you have a passworded server for example or a you have a, a large unit maybe that plays on a private server if you disable battle eye that can prevent shit like people getting kicked by battle eye for no fucking reason which happens a lot especially in large player counts anyway 
Next is timestamp format. This is basically just a, a timestamp format for RPT errors. I have no examples because I deleted my RPT errors, but if you have an RPT error, it will label them with short timestamps, if that makes sense. <clears throat> Next is force, force rotor lib simulation equals zero, which means that I am not forcing the helicopter DLC flight model, so it's up to the player if they want to enable it or not. So zero means that they could have an arcade flight model if they want, or a advanced one if they have the DLC. If you set it to one, that means that they have to have the DLC, I'm pretty sure, and that it will force the advanced flight model, period. There will not be an arcade flight model uh, for anyone on the server. Then there's persistent equals one. This basically means if you set it to zero, then when, a pl when all players have left the server, the mission will reset itself. If you set it to one, if persistent equals one, then that means that when all players leave the server, the mission will continue on as if people were still in the server and the date, you know, the time of day will still progress on. So if a player comes back four hours later, it'll be four hours later in the game. It could be nighttime when they come back, you know, stuff like that. And then uh, down here, do not edit these port lines. I am not gonna talk about that because it, sh it should be basically pretty simple. I guess just copy it. And then right here is the map rotation. I only have one map rotation, which is Altus Insurgency. It just keeps things simple. If I have just one mission here, then it'll be the default mission that gets selected automatically uh, for my server. I have uh, in the init command line of my dedicated server, there is basically this. I'll type it. Auto init. And this in my dedicated server is command line will automatically initialize the server and start it up automatically I won't have you won't have to wait till a player joins your mission or server for it to start if that makes sense so anyway hopefully this video was helpful if it wasn't then let me know um, I can answer any questions you put in the comments section below also like I said in the description of the video there will also be some helpful sources on top of what I already covered in this video so be sure to look at those too and anyway I'll see you next time